Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can import modules using import syntax in Node.js rather than the standard way which is using require and I'll also show you some advantages to doing this because the differences are more than in syntax. So first of all what happens if you just go ahead and use import syntax instead of require. So if I run this script I get an error that tells me I cannot use import outside of a module. And this is because import, it uses a different and more modern system for importing modules than require. It's called ES modules, and it involves a module loader running in the background, helping to make imports more efficient. So you need to let Node.js know that you'd like to use this system. So there are two ways of doing that. The first is after creating a new node project in your folder using npm init, go to package.json and in there, create a property of type and set its value to module. So what this does is it sets the default module system for the entire project to ES modules. So you can now start using import throughout your project. So if we try running this code one more time, it works now. Another way to enable the use of ES modules is at the individual file level. So what you can do is change the extension on your JavaScript files to MJS and Node.js will recognize that you want to use ES modules. It's better to make this decision at the beginning of a project rather than changing them later like I am here, but I didn't want to cause any confusion with the .mjs extension at the beginning of this tutorial. So if I run the code again, this time I have to include the mjs extension and it now works without me having set the default module system to ES modules. So this can be a bit more work setting the file extensions, but often a better setup and the reason is that even if you are using ES module syntax consistently for your own modules, you might import a third party library that exports using the CommonJS default module syntax. You can import such an export in ES modules. So this export is made using the syntax for the older system. And then in this file, I'll change the extension to support import syntax. So if I run this file, import 5.mjs, it imports that export successfully because it's assumed without the mjs extension that my module 4.js is using the default module system. But if I assume that it's using ES modules when it's not, we get an error. And for this reason, it can be quite risky to assume that all modules are ES modules, especially as it's not the default module system in Node.js, at least not yet. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and change the extensions of all files here, except my module 4 js to mjs extensions so that I don't have to assume in package.json anymore that all files with a JS extension are using ES modules. Now with import enabled, let's talk about its behavior in an app. So if you're importing modules at the top of your script, like I am here, then import is going to load each module one at a time before running your main code. 
So in this case, module one reads a very large file synchronously. So this takes quite a while. But if we run this script, you'll notice that module two, it waited for module one before exporting. And then the main code waited for module two. So when you're importing at the top of your script, this is probably the behavior that you want to have and require it would work in the same way. But what you have with import is the option to import asynchronously without blocking subsequent code. So you can do that using the import function. I'll import module one from before. So the import function returns a promise. And the result of that promise is the loaded module. So I log to the console. First of all, a check to see whether there is a value for module one. And then I log a conditional code message representing any code that has waited for module one to load. So if I run this script, app import two dot mjs, you see that the main code, it didn't wait for module one to load, even though the import function is called before any main code runs. If you're using require, then this process, it would be synchronous. So I have a parallel script here using require. If I run this, notice that the main code, it didn't run until after the import of module one and the conditional code ran. So it was blocked from loading when require is used with the import function. You have the flexibility of asynchronous loading and you can use the import function anywhere in your script. So if you wanted to load a script conditionally, you can do that. Now, if you're willing to write a lot more code, you could potentially replicate this asynchronous loading behavior with require, but what you can't replicate is the selective loading of particular module items. So here I'm importing the entire Lodash library, which has lots of useful functions on it. So I'll log the library itself, and then I'm calling the mean function on the Lodash object that I've imported. So if I run this script, I get the mean value, which is four, but I've also imported a lot of functions that I'm not using. So I'd like to just import this function. It would be more efficient and I'd also save memory in my app. So Lodash, it offers an ES modules version, which I've already installed and I want to just import the mean function. Then I don't have to access the Lodash library. I can just access mean directly. So in this way, I can use the mean function without importing the entire library. Now this isn't possible with require because require, it always gets an entire module. It can look like you made a selective import if you use destructuring syntax, but that isn't the case. So if we run this, it looks like we've just imported the mean function only, but if we log to the console, require dot cache and we run it again and we take a look at what's there you see we've imported 
the entire Lodash library. Now, the reason that it's possible to avoid this with import is that with import, a module loader is running in the background that is selectively loading only the items that you want to import and caching is managed outside your app, helping to save memory because your app is now capable of importing less than an entire library. Now, the final advantage to using import that I want to show you is that you can use a fairly new feature called top level await. So here I'm importing module3.mjs in the normal way. But if we take a look at module three, it's quite unusual in that it's exporting the result of an asynchronous process that is promise based. And I'm using the await keyword outside an async function, which is usually not possible. Nevertheless, if you run the importing module, you can see from the fact that we've logged the result of the fetch request to the console that import has waited for the asynchronous process in the module to complete before executing more code if you wanted asynchronous loading so subsequent code isn't blocked you can use the import function like i showed you earlier in the video so that is it for this tutorial on using import in node.js and its advantages i hope you found it useful if you did please consider hitting the like button down below this video it helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video and if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future don't forget you can subscribe to the channel